In February 2014, Russia invaded and started to occupy the Ukrainian territory of Crimea. Russia hailed the occupation as the reclamation of Russian land. The quote-unquote reunification campaign ran under the slogan Krim Nash, or Crimea is ours. Ukraine and most of the civilized world have not recognized Russia's claim to have annexed the territory and see Crimea as part of Ukraine. So who does Crimea really belong to, Russia or Ukraine, if it was part of both in different periods of its history? Crimea had indeed formerly been part of Imperial Russia and then the Soviet Union. After 300 years under the vassalage of the Ottomans, Crimea was first annexed by the Russian Empress Catherine the Great in 1783, but not without some convincing from her military commander Grigory Pachomkin. However, by order of Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev, in 1954 Crimea was granted to Ukraine. The peninsula remained part of Ukrainian territory after the disintegration of the Soviet Union. Until, that is, Putin decided he would quote-unquote restore historic justice. In 2014, Russian troops invaded and occupied the peninsula, in installing pro-Kremlin authorities at gunpoint. A few weeks later, Russia held a sham referendum in Crimea. The results of the ballot showed that an overwhelming majority of Crimeans had chosen to leave Ukraine and join Russia. Naturally, neither Ukraine nor its Western allies recognized the results of the sham vote and called the referendum illegitimate. And by occupying Crimea, part of a neighboring independent state, Russia violated a number of international laws and agreements. Most importantly, the international community viewed it as the first attempt to redraw borders by force since World War II, and generally as a very negative precedent. Imagine what chaos, what chaos will begin if all former empires wanted to reclaim their old lands. Some might think, like US President Donald Trump, that Crimea is Russian because everyone there speaks Russian. Looking at the demographic makeup of Crimea, the ethnic Russian population is indeed dominant. At the time of the occupation uh, in 2014, ethnic Russians made up over half of the peninsula's population. Ethnic Ukrainians were the second largest ethnic group. Crimea's indigenous people, the Crimean Tatars, accounted for only around 11%. And like in many other former Soviet countries, they all spoke, spoke Russian as a common language. But it hasn't always been so. The full-scale Russification of Crimea started after World War II, and, would it, and it would have not been possible had the peninsula not been ethnically cleansed in 1944. 74 years ago, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin ordered the deportation of the entire Crimean Tatar population to Central Asia and Siberia. And by the time the Crimean Tatars were allowed to return, the Soviet Union was on the verge of collapse, and their native land was occupied by other people. We'll talk about that in detail in the next episode of Honest History. For Vladimir Putin, the fall of the Soviet Union was a huge geopolitical tragedy. His dreams of lost imperial glory and territorial ambitions have shaped modern Russian foreign policy. But first, you need to understand two concepts. Compatriot, a broad term used to describe not only ethnic Russian minorities in former Soviet countries, but also Russian language speakers and those who quote unquote, feel inseparably connected to the Russian world. Russian world, or Ruski Mir in Russian, is Putin's idea of the unity of Russian-speaking peoples in Eastern Europe, the Caucasus, Central Asia, and the Baltics. Putin sees it as his responsibility to protect compatriots and Russian speakers living outside of Russia. He uses preposterous threats to them to justify his interference in internal affairs of other states or the invasion of other countries' territories. To amplify the invented violations of rights of ethnic Russian minorities abroad, the Kremlin turns to lies. In Crimea, where ethnic Russians are a majority and the Russian language is the lingua franca, the Kremlin lied that there was discrimination against Russian speakers. It falsely claimed that people there were in danger from Ukrainian nationalists, who Russian, prop who Russian propaganda called neo-Nazis, anti-Semites, and Russophobes. But as the subsequent inter intervention in eastern Ukraine showed, the biggest danger to Russian speakers living outside Mother Russia is, in fact, the Kremlin and its armies.